Hey everybody, Ronaldo Wofferman here with Media Master Video Manuals. Now I'm going to be talking about today about the overall layout, the feel of Media Master. As you can see, I'm using Media Master Pro 4.1.6 for the Mac. That's the most current version as of the time of the video. Uh, 4.2 is the version available for Windows. But the overall feel of it's going to be the same. One of the things that I love about Media Master is that everything is right in front of me so I can easily see what I need to do, see my workflow all in one spot. Now, there's a few differences between Pro and Express, of course, and I'm going to cover some of those differences as I go along in this video. So first of all, what you're going to see on the top here is you're going to see your 12 individual layers. Now, that's for Pro. Express only has eight. And if I click it here, it's going to flash the individual window panel uh, that I can, you know, that I can see what's going on. So let's go and look at the top part here. First we have of course our patch window and the patch is really useful for when you're controlling this via DMX, very similar to basically your banks, right? So we have banks one, uh, bank one out of 120 and you'll see one through nine. When I go to two out of 20, it just basically shows you the most recent one. See right there, so there's banks. So pretty easy. When I go into the patch, it basically goes into individual patches and I can explain that much more later on of how that works why that all works the way it is but just so you can kind of see basically what's going on we have our show settings tab which that's in another video I'll be covering later on latch which means when I push a keyboard will it actually stay fully on like that or only to bump it and then, of course, our Outputs tab, which is something to do with the Video Mapper. The Video Mapping option is available in Pro and not Express. But let's go ahead and go into our first bank over here. Our first part is the Edit. Now, the Edit uh, visual, for Visual Preset Parameters gives you a lot of different options, and you can save each individual preset. So first of all, you can select your visual number. Uh, if there's a volume, a pan, uh, you know, for volume pan. Uh, if there's individual text, your priority, uh, foreground or background, which you can also choose from here as well. Your aspect ratio. Our loop mode. So you can have where it plays forward, plays backwards, where it goes back and forth. You can control it with time code. You can control your speed. Your loop beginning and end, which is great if the clip maybe has a beginning and you don't want to have to go into your video editing program to clip that one part out. You can just cut that out right there. And you can change your start point. So your start point can be different from where your loop begins and ends. You can go ahead and pre-apply your effect based on your individual preset. Uh, and then this is really cool. I can select the individual key that I want to trigger the individual bank with. Now you'll see there's three individual wheels right here or knobs or whatever you want to call them. You can assign what you want those to be and then you can assign your DMX parameters because the, uh, Arceus Pro or Express, the me, Media Master, can be controlled with DMX. Now, Pro gives you a lot more options than Express does, of course. Uh, but you can actually tell, okay, well, I want DMX channel 13 or whatever you assign it via your show options, and that's a later on video. Uh, you can tell, well, I want this DMX uh, fader to control my Z position or my axis or my lightness or sound or whatever it may be. So using your DMX board you can control the volume of individual video clips which is a pretty powerful feature when you think about applications in the long run. You can select your position, your width, your height, your rotation and your Z is your zoom. So you can zoom in and out of a video clip if you need to. And of course, you have your mixing. You got plenty of mixing options. Replace, multiplication, addition, subtraction, removing black, white, maximum, minimum, instant, long fade, red, green, blue, dark, and tiled. And then you have your individual parameters within that mixing position. So a lot of different options that you have there. And we're going to go to get out of there because I don't want to mess. Oops, excuse me. We are going to get out of there without saving. Next is your visual options. And when you click on your visual options here as far as so you can see your library and you can add or remove clips, you can add clips just by drag and dropping or you can individually add them in your library yourself and I can show you about that later on. But you can have tons of different folders organized from 0 to 255 and the reason is because it's going to coincide with DMX values because you can actually slide up a fader and go through different folders. Same thing here, then you can go through individual banks within each folder. That's why it's 0 to 
through 255. Now, Media Master, just like Grand VJ, will accept anything imaginable. It'll accept QuickTime files, it'll accept AVI, it'll accept Resolume files, and there's a codec that you need for that to play. Uh, you can also do live video inputs, webcams, USB inputs, FireWire. You can do Flash on Apple, you can even do Quartz Composer. And the newest versions are now sandboxed in because with Yosemite, Quartz Composer, if it crashed, it would bring the whole system down or the whole program down. Now it's just in, or sandbox, meaning that if there is a memory leak, it's just within Quartz Composer itself. This is not a limitation of the program. This is a limitation of Quartz Composer and Yosemite. But it's just easy as just clicking, and there it is. It appears instantly. Uh, notice how smooth and overall fluid the feel of the program is, right? There's a, a flash file. Flash files are known for taking up quite a bit of space. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the foreground. And I'm going to tell it that I want to remove black. Let's see what happens. There it is right there. Maybe I wanted to remove white. Bam. There it is. Now, this looks very pixelated, but that's because that is the preview option. It is not the overall final output, if that makes sense. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the output window again in a later video. But that's the overall part of that. Very easy to go in and out, or I can just do my W key right there. Or with DMX, I can literally control this finely tuned if I need to. Now with DMX, you can even control your outputs as well. So if you're doing video mapping, you have different surfaces, you can tell which surface you want it to go to. In a time-coded show or in a show where you don't have an individual video person or it's crucial that the lights are synced with video, this is of utmost importance. Now let's go and look on the right-hand side over here. Again, we got the preview window, which I said looks pixelated, but that's only a preview window. You can choose your individual output there if you have different surfaces. We have our master options, so we can do our brightness, contrast, and we can also black out temporarily if we need to. Here we have our GPU. Now, this is showing me my current display. I don't have a second monitor hooked up. When you do have a second monitor hooked up, it is going to show you the frame rate of that. Now we have our CPU. Now, this is different than some other programs. Higher values are better. This is going to show you how much CPU is left over, uh, your overall percentage of what's left over. The lower the number, the less CPU you have available. And then here it's going to show you the protocols that are currently running. So you'll see DMX, MIDI, LED, CleanNet, Video Mapper, License, and Timecode. This also supports other protocols. They're not currently showing up because they are not activated. MSX is one of them. If you don't know what that is, basically it sends the preview of the individual um, video output. So it'll show them to you as palettes, for example, on a HOG4 system. You also have tons of different options. One of my favorite is the text window so you can actually have different text options so for example there's my name DJ Crazy Ace uh, then we put our uh, Arceus video manuals then we can write Media Master Pro 4.1.6 and then we're gonna go here into a text option and I'm gonna go into the folder that I specifically made for my text values now there's some here that are already there and they're empty because I moved them here uh, so we have that here. We're gonna bring that up, and I'm gonna put that. See how it's on my norm? It's on normal. Of course, I can change that to my foreground if I need to. But I'm gonna bring that down. We're just gonna take that there. Now the text options, we can you know kind of go over that a little bit later on, but it appears there. So it's pretty easy how that works. We can bring that down and put something else. There's another option there. You can also pause it. And again, there's your blackout. Now on your edit, of course, you have a few different options here. We've got resync to MX. Pretty obvious what that does. Library management is pretty much the window that I just opened up. Uh, text management is the window that I just showed you that does text. And your time code offsets are pretty crucial when you are doing time code and this is something I'm going to cover in a video much later on. Uh, output management is again when you are doing overall video mapping anything like that this is going to allow you to group different layers together 
your show settings. Uh, I'll do it in a video much later on because this is services own, but this basically allows you to assign what your parameters are for DMX and MIDI. Uh, then you have your video mapper window. I'll cover that later on. Your ClingNet mapper, which I've already done videos on both of these. If you actually go to my Grand VJ video manuals, you're going to see some options of video mapper. This is the exact same mapper as Grand VJ as far as how it all works. Then you have your release patch, your release all, clear patch, clear show windows. You can display or your toggle full screen. And then back on your preferences, we have into theater mode. And the rest of this I'm going to kind of cover later on, but again we have your DMX, so you, have, you, you can do ArtNet or you can do USB with an NTEC dongle. You have your MIDI inputs, you have your audio options, time code, performance, your activation, uh, your info. Now let's go into Fixture. Now Fixture is one of the options that's available only in Pro. You're going to have to restart it. I'm going to do that. Subscribe and you're going to see more from this playlist for the Media Master video manuals as I upload them. A lot of it really is, hey, play around with it, explore, and you're going to find lots of things yourself. It is a very easy, straightforward video manual to use. Now, fixture mode. This is made for those that are controlling it with a DMX system such as HOG where everything's already going to be pre-selected. Whereas theater mode is where you can change clips live if you need to. Basically, your fixture mode is automatically going to be preset, right? So here's my first one here. You can select your visual. So let's go into one of the loops. You pre-select everything on there. You have it already mapped to your DMX. You bring it up, and there it is right there. Now remember that different video clips take different amount of memory. This is a 4K clip, so it's going to go, if you look at my CPU, which is insanely high, and it's going to dip down. Again, that's not the program. That is how much playing this video clip even on a different one. So I need to find a different compression method or whatever it may be. But you can select everything on from in here, leave it like it is. Now you can leave your media server in a different part of the room or just, you know, change or remove the laptop lid. I mean, not remove the laptop lid, but dim your laptop lid. And now you can control everything from your DMX program without having people mess with it. And I'm going to talk about that much later on a different video clip and I say much later on because there's tons of videos that are going to come out but again that's basically the overall interface in a nutshell now Media Master if you don't have it you want to play around with it you can definitely go to ArcaeusPro.com and download it and play with the demo fully functional it'll just flash demo every couple of minutes or so so again check it out play with it if you guys have any questions please make sure to subscribe leave a comment let me know what you'd like to see on this right away and I'll cover over all of that Thank you guys so much for watching. Good night and God bless.